I wanted to take some time to show off another chart type in uh, Google Sheets. I recently did a video showing some features of scatter plots, and in this one I wanted to show you motion charts because they are so cool and so easy to make in Google Sheets. So to give you an example of what a motion chart actually is, I am going to show you an example of a motion chart. This one's on Google Public Data. And uh, what it is, is it shows you the relationship between a couple of different variables on the X and Y axis over the course of many years. So that means that it is the life expectancy and the fertility rate um, each year, and it shows you how it changes over the course of the year, how, th how those points move. You'll also notice that the circles have sizes and they also have colors. Those are additional variables you can add in if you want. And again, I'll show you that once we start building our own, but I just wanted to, again, show you what is a motion chart. So what you can do is you push play and you'll see that as the years pass along the bottom there, the dots change. They move because the life expectancy and the fertility rate, those XY coordinates, are different for those different years. Motion charts are great because they allow you to see, number one, trends over the course of time, but they also allow you to compare more data sets than you norm or more data sets than you normally are able to. So I'm going to look at my data. What you definitely need is you need multiple years, can be just two, although that's a boring graph, uh, for a particular category. Again, you could look at one circle if you really, really wanted to, but it would be better to have more. A lot of the times you see this by country, and it shows that life expectancy per country. Um, you could also do this in a classroom if you looked at different classes or different periods, or um, you could even track the growth of particular students over the course of many years. This also obviously has a lot of business implications in terms of what the different fiscal years are looking like. I chose to do something with the NBA. So here I have um, some statistics for three-point shots and free throws and points per game for six different years for a lot of different NBA teams. I'm going to show you a few different ways that we can look at this data. Again, because I have multiple years for each team, this works. So to insert a chart, you don't have to select the data right away, but I am going to select my team, the year, and I'm going to select two variables to begin with. That'll be my X coordinates and my Y coordinates. So I'm going to go into Insert, Chart. For this one, it's not going to come up in the recommendations. You're going to need to go over to Chart Types, scroll down to the bottom, and click on Motion Chart. It'll look like a bunch of bubbles. There we go. Now here's where we can start doing some customization. You can go into the Customization tab. But most of the customization on a motion chart is done directly in the chart itself. So right now you'll see that all of my dots are the same color and they're the same size. And um, I can choose to have them be unique or I can choose to have those colors related to the three point attempts or the three points made. Um, I can also change the size to be related to that. Now because I only selected that particular data, I don't have those extra variables to make them change sizes like we saw on the example. And I'm going to show you in just a second how to add that in. Before we get too far though, I want to uh, look back at our chart. Right now I have three points made on the uh, x-axis and three points attempted on the y-axis, but I think that this should be different. So I'm going to click on this and I am going to change my axes. So this is a great feature of the motion chart in that it's more interactive. You can change it right away. You don't have to have your data set up in a particular way and you have a lot of different uh, ways to look at the data. You can also 
look at call out specific teams. So here I can see specific teams and you can even change it from linear scale to a log scale depending on your data. So I'm going to push play just so you guys can see. I have six years and it's pointing out those particular two teams because I selected them and I can deselect them so they go away. But again, it's showing more. It's showing that trail where they're going. Oops, I'm surprised that took that long. All right, I'll show you without those. There's our lovely little motion chart. Now right now it's not a very exciting because everything's the same color, everything's the same size. And again, you can change those if you want based on these particular variables. However, you might want to add in some more information. So maybe I want to add in the points per game. Maybe I want to add in the free throw attempts and the free throws made. So to do this, you have a couple of options. You can just cancel out of this and then select more data. Or in this case, I'm going to change so that I am, let's see, I went through D, so I need E, F, G. I'm just going to change the range that I have. And then when I go in to do some of my customization, oops, I wonder if I'm going to have to select it again. There we go. Now when I go in to do my customization, I have a few more options because I have more data in my set. So now I can choose and I can change my X and Y axis to be different things because I also have my free throws in there and I also have my points per game. This is where I'm going to look at changing the size or changing the color. Right now it has automatically wanted um, the free throws made for me to be the color, but I'm just going to have them all be the same color. And instead I'm going to have the size be related to the points per game. So that'll change sizes as the years go by as well. And if you want to call out a particular team, you definitely can. I'm going to push play. We can see how those things change over the course of the year. Maybe I'm not interested in three points anymore. I can go in and I can look at my free throws attempted and I can look at my free throws made and we can watch that particular motion graph. Always associated with motion graphs are going to be some bar graphs and some line plots. Those are things that come with that motion chart, which is really great. You don't have to do any work to see that, and it's just another way to view the data. Now, in the, I want to attempt to, there we go. Once you're ready, you can just say insert, and that will insert it directly into your sheet. Now, a couple of things that you'll notice is that you can still edit it. It inserted what it had originally, but I can change it to be whatever I want. And that's something that anybody who gets into your sheet is able to do too. Because they're not changing anything, they're just changing some of the options. Everyone has those same options, so everyone's going to be able to access the data the same. If you click on the drop down and you go down to publish chart, it's really cool, you can publish a link. And you can also embed this in a site. One of the great things about motion charts is you have some very specific options when you are publishing the chart. You really want to publish it somewhere um, interactive. You have the option between interactive and image. But with a motion chart, the cool part is seeing how it changes and having a user be able to click on things and change things. So if you can, choose interactive. This also allows you to update the data and those to be published to your particular chart that's embedded somewhere in a website. You also need to make sure that you um, select what it is that you want to publish. Do you want to publish the whole sheet? Do you just want to publish the chart? Um, in this case, I just want to publish the chart, so I'm going to keep that done. If you want to embed it, I haven't clicked on embed, you can also get a link to it. You just say publish. Yep. And what that will do is it will give you a link to just the chart. And again, that's something that you can also get embed code for and put into your website. 
and it will allow anyone to be able to interact with your data in such a cool, cool way. So again, that was just a quick uh, look at how you can create your own motion charts. I hope you look into giving it a shot. I'll link uh, this particular data if you want an example of some data to look at. Again, it's just some MBA statistics I got from the MBA website uh, to help you get started with looking at how to use these to analyze data trends over the course of many years.